Hello everyone, welcome to Informatica support videos. My name is Jefflyn and I'm a part of Informatica Global Customer Support. In this video, we're going to look at the IICS Source Control API resources. So the agenda for this video is to look through the various offerings for source control in IICS. Then we're going to look at the APIs that we have available and we're going to do a small demo of all of those APIs. IICS provides the option to set up source control with both on-prem and cloud-based repositories. The table on screen will show you the current offerings that IICS provides for source control. If you're looking for steps to set up source control on any of your IICS organizations, we already have support videos that walk through that uh, particular configuration. The links for those videos are mentioned in the description for your reference. So then uh, when we look at the source control APIs, we have six of them. So let's just quickly run through all six of those APIs. The first one is the check-in API followed by the checkout. They are basically to perform the check-in and check-out of either individual assets or projects or folders as a whole. The source control action API is a get call that will tell you the status of any check-in or check-out operation that has been called. Uh, the next APIs we have are the commit history API that is used to get a list of all of the commits that have been done on that particular IICS organization for uh, source control. You can go ahead and use that to get old uh, commit hashes in order to use them in the next API, which is the pull API. So pull is basically used to get any older version of the assets. Uh, and for that, we will have to pass in the commit hash with which that particular version of the asset was committed. The final API we have is the pull status, which is a get call that will tell you the status of the pull uh, when we pass the action ID in the API call. So these are the six APIs that IICS provides to perform source control in any IICS organization. So let's get right into the demo of these six APIs that we've just discussed. For this video's demo, we will be using this particular project as the project uh, we are going to be uh, doing the various Git operations on. And uh, I have six assets within this project which we will be using. So for the API calls, I'm going to be making use of the Postman utility. So let's jump right in. The first step I'm going to be doing is making a login call to IICS so that I can get a session ID with which I can make all of the subsequent API calls. So as you can see, the call is successful and I am assigning this particular session ID to my session ID variable so that it will get carried forward automatically to my other calls. Uh, if you don't have a configuration as such, you can merely just copy paste the session ID. So uh, in order to perform the first action, which is our check in action, we would need to pass the IDs of the assets we are trying to check in. Now, how do we get these IDs? In order to get these IDs, we can make use of the lookup APIs. Now for the lookup operation, we have to pass the path of the asset and the type of the asset. So as you can see, the path includes the project name and uh, the name of the asset itself. If there was a folder, we would have to mention that as well, but we do not in this case. And the type for the MCT is MTT and for the mapping, it's simply mapping. So with this as the body for this lookup query, I'm going to make the API call. So as you can see, we have the IDs of the objects returned. So what we will do is just copy this and let's go to our check-in API and I'm going to paste the MCT's ID first and then I'm going back to look up to fetch the ID of my mapping. And then I will go ahead and paste that as well. So once that is done, uh, you can see that we also have a summary and a description that is being passed. So this will uh, be a part of the uh, commit history that is provided. You can use this to pass any uh, information that will be helpful in the future to distinguish one commit from the other. 
So let's just go ahead and send in the check-in call. So this is what the response from your check-in request is going to look like. You will be returned with the ID of this particular check-in and it will give you the current state which is ideally not started. So now let's take this action uh, ID and let's go to our uh, source control action API. So as discussed, this is used to give us the uh, current status of any check-in or check-out operations that we have done on that particular organization. So with that ID, we can get the current status. And as you can see, it has completed successfully. So we get the state as successful. Now we can verify this check-in from the UI as well. So let's navigate to our IICS UI and I'm going to do a refresh. Once the refresh is completed, we can see that the mapping and the MCT have been checked in. Now, uh, the next option we are going to try is to check in the entire project. So again, I'm going to try to fetch the ID of this particular project with the path as the project name and the type as project. Let's go ahead and make the lookup call. And once we get the ID, I am going to copy that into my check-in request. So I will place the ID of the project and this particular field or this particular attribute is used to mention whether or not I want all of the assets contained within that project to be included. So in this case, I want all of my assets to be checked in along with my project. So I'm going to set include container assets as true. And I've provided similarly a description and a summary, and I'm going to make the check in request. Again, we are returned with an ID, which we can take and use in our source control action API to get the status. And as you can see, the check-in process has completed successfully. Uh, like last time, we can go ahead and check on the UI. Now, after the refresh, we can see that all of the uh, assets within this particular project have been uh, checked in. Let's verify the project itself. So as you can see, the project in itself has also been checked in. So this proves to us that our check-in has been successful. So these are uh, two of the ways in which we can make use of the check-in API. Moving on, let's, check, uh, let's do the checkout API. Now, once again, for checkout, we would have to pass the IDs of the uh, assets that we're checking out. So uh, in this case, let's do it slightly differently. Let's take the ID of our project. And I'm setting uh, the contain assets field to false, which means not all of its contained uh, assets will be checked out along with it. And in addition to that, I am going to pick up the ID of our mapping alone. So let's take the ID of the mapping and let's go ahead and do a checkout and let's see what is the outcome. We get a similar response in checkout as we do for check-in. So let's take the ID and go back to our source control actions and look for the outcome. And you can see the checkout is successful. And like we did the last two times with check-in, let's go to the UI and do a refresh to validate. Now, as you can see, the mapping 28 has been checked out by me. I can also go to all projects and see that the project itself has also been checked out to me. So this indicates that our checkout call has been successful. So now let's go back to Postman and jump right into the next API, which is our commit history API. So this is a get call that essentially returns all of the uh, history of commits that we have on this particular instance. So as you can see, we have the uh, project check-in that we did, and then we've got the MCT and the mapping check-in we did. And then we've got, uh, you know, the previous actions that were done 
on this particular repository all reflected here. So what we can do is we can go ahead and pick up these hashes to perform pull at any point to roll back to an older version or to maybe pull these assets into another, uh, another organization. So that is exactly what we're going to do now. I have another test organization in which the uh, source control demo project does not exist. And this is that particular organization. As you can see, we only have three projects. So the idea is to go ahead and pull that uh, project from my Git repository into this particular uh, IICS organization. Now to achieve this, I have gone ahead and linked this to the same repository. So let's go ahead and um, make the pull call. Before that, let's log into my test organization and get a session ID for that particular org. Right, so as you can see, we have a username and password for the test organization. And with that, we are getting a session ID. Let me just assign that to my relevant variable. Now, in the pull operation, like mentioned previously, we will need to pass the commit hash. So let me just go back to the commit and let me pick up the hash for the pull. And I would need to pass the name of the asset that I'm trying to pull. So which is this particular project. Let me just pick up the project name. And let me make the pull call. So we get our expected response. We've got the pull action ID with the state and the message. So let's take the pull action ID. And that takes us to the last API, which is the pull status get call. So let me just go there and paste this action ID and send. Now, as you can see, the pull status is successful. Uh, we also have a little bit of uh, expansion upon this particular API, which is to include a parameter called expand equals object. Now this will give me the list of each object that is contained within this pool. So when I run that API, you can see that not only does it tell me the status of my pool, but it also tells me uh, about each of the uh, assets that were pulled. So I have my mapping, uh, you know, and the status is successful. So this uh, particular API is essentially useful when we are dealing with uh, a pull in which not all objects were successful. So we can make use of this API to kind of pinpoint which of the assets was either skipped or failed and you know, which uh, was the uh, I mean, what was the error with which it failed? So that information can be gathered by using the expand objects as a parameter in the get uh, pull status call. So uh, now to validate this pull, let's just go to our uh, test organization and do a request. We are expecting a new project to have been created. Now, as you can see, the uh, source control demo project has been created if we went into it we can see all of our six assets that have been created in this as well. So this shows us that the pull operation was also successful. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our demo. We have looked into all of the six APIs that IICS offers to perform the various source control operations. There are a few reference links and KB articles that you can uh, refer to to know more about source control and IICS. All of these links should be available in the description for your reference. So that brings us to the end of the video. We would love to hear from you. So if you have any feedbacks, do let us know on the email address that you see on the screen. And you can also uh, let us know on Twitter. Thank you.